As someone that never really likes the idea of sequels when the ending to the original film isn't clearly calling for one, ahem, but also felt that this film's title character was by far the best thing about the original, I was kind of in two minds about what to think when this film was announced. I was sure the film would at least be good, heck this is Pixar, pretty much everything they touch that doesn't involve characters on four wheels is destined for greatness. However, I wasn't sure if this was going to rank as one of their real elite films, or just one of their more middle of the road decent films, which by the way is the category I would place the original film under. Then came the trailers, which, to me at least, made the film look more like a buddy comedy where Marlon and Dory were just meeting some quirky characters while on some sort of road trip, or current trip I guess you would have to call it. Couple that with Dory's rather weak motivations for wanting to see her family again. I miss them. And my expectations for this film were lowered considerably. Well, I may have to give up on watching trailers for upcoming films, heck they are basically one giant spoiler anyway, because much like with Inside Out, the trailers for this film are nothing like the film itself. Well, fool me twice Pixar trailers, so I guess that's shame on me, but seriously guys, find a new marketing department. So without beating around the bush any longer, Finding Dory is a great film, though it really should be called Finding Dory's Parents, since that's basically what the whole film is about. There is much more of an insight into Dory's condition of short-term memory loss here, as well as a far better illustration of how difficult it makes Dory's life and how frustrating it can be for people, or fish, around her. But you never feel like any of them are in the wrong. Like the original, there is no villain here. They are all just characters trying to get somewhere and having to deal with the circumstances of their lives. Dory has this little speech at one point about just dealing with what life throws at you and not worrying too much. It fits well with the film's structure of just crazy stuff happening again and again. There are some scenes in the early stages of this film that felt like it was just trying to be the first film again, but they are done away with after about 10 minutes, and were probably just a way to refresh people's memory since it's been over 10 years. After that, the film quickly takes a very different turn by having one of the characters be taken away by a human that thinks they are saving them, and the other two characters having to find a way to rescue them. Oh. Wait. Okay, but seriously though, there are a number of interesting and entertaining new characters that Dory meets here. A red octopus with an arm missing, a short-sighted whale shark, and a beluga whale who... Uh, actually I don't think there's anything wrong with him. I thought when we were first introduced to these new characters that they were just going to be the subjects of a few jokes and then send Dory on her way. But they actually play a fairly large role in the story for the remainder of the film. We find out more about them and by the end I was kind of hoping to see them again at some point. While the plot of the original film seemed fairly well suited to being about fish, since the two main characters are in the ocean for most of it, this film's plot works less well with its main characters being aquatic animals, as it requires a lot of movement around the human world. But they actually do find a number of creative and interesting ways to move them around different environments. Some of these feel a tad too convenient, but no more so than, oh, I don't know, that whale swimming into Sydney Harbour or Marlin finding that mask in the first film. Now, like the first film, this one opens with a prologue scene that takes place many years before the main story. Unlike the first film, however, this scene is actually called back to a number of times during the film in the form of flashbacks. This actually had been the original plan for the reveal of the fate of Nemo's mother in the first film. However, it was dropped as Andrew Staten felt, and I quote, there was no aha moment, it was exactly what you thought it was going to be. So with that in mind, I'm surprised Stanton didn't take the same approach with this film, as I felt the flashbacks here were building to something unexpected, only to have it be nothing I couldn't have guessed. The frequency of these flashbacks also messed up the film's structure somewhat, and that's another key element to this film that had me a little torn. The film's structure certainly has variety to it. It's all quite well balanced too. It's basically one third comedy, one third action, and one third emotional stuff. But at the same time, the transitions between these different moments are kind of jarring, and the film never seems to stop moving. Which in a way is good because it at least means the story never drags, but there are times when you need the plot to just stop and breathe for a bit, like the scene in The Whale from the first film. A scene like that was severely lacking here. Even when the film ends, it just sort of stops the moment things get resolved. Another minor issue I have is that some of the aquarium animal story meets are giving a lot of the film's exposition, and it felt a bit jarring the way they delivered it, as well as puzzling as to how they would know some of the things they tell her. What's really strange about this is that Sigourney Weaver plays herself as a PA system in the film, and she seems like the perfect tool for exposition dumps, which are instead given to other characters. So in conclusion, Finding Dory has a good mix of emotion and comedy that merges together okay, though not seamlessly. It gives an interesting insight into what a burden having short-term memory loss can be without ever feeling too dark for a kid's film. The emotion didn't grab me in quite the same way as it did in the first film, and certainly nothing like how it did in Inside Out or Wally. -E. but it still feels like it fits with the film's overall tone and is not just some forced emotional moments that a lot of films seem to have that make me feel like the writers are just saying, oh look it's emotional, there are so many feels in this scene, you have to like it if it makes you feel something, right? For me, this is on par with the original as one of Pixar's middle-of-the-road films. If I had to pick one, I probably do prefer the original, but only by a tiny bit.